Alright, hey guys, how are you doing? Tom Fountainhead here, back again for the, one of the last lessons here in the 30 days of Guitar Lesson Challenge that I set for myself on this channel, giving you guys one new guitar lesson every day for 30 days. And this is economy picking week and we are at day number five as far as I can see. So yesterday I introduced you guys to the concept of playing odd numbered, more specifically uh, five groups of five. Ugh. So yesterday I introduced you guys to the concept of playing groups of five in the minor pentatonic using economy picking. And today I want to stretch that concept a little bit and to um, try the same thing with groups of seven. So in the minor pentatonic that's kind of a kind of a big deal, that's kind of an issue, because in that first group of five that we played, one, two, three, four, five, we already used up four of the notes that we have available. So um, we could, we, we'd have to resort to inserting chromatic passing tones in order to play groups of seven. So um, let's see if we can do that, you know, later on. So for now, let's try to stick within a scale and do this instead. So we return to the C major three note per string shape. And there we have three notes on the low E string. Then we play one note on the A string and three notes on the D string. So we are leaving out the F and the A. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, as you can see, hopefully, we have the same concept where we have multiple notes in the low string, one note on the intermediate string, and then multiple notes again on the higher string. And now we have a group of seven, right? Pretty cool. The problem is, with this picking pattern here, down, up, down, 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 up, down, which works perfectly within this seven note grouping and gives us this three note sweep that makes everything so easy. The problem with that though is that our last note is a downstroke. And if we wanted to sequence this idea from one string to the next, like we did yesterday, if we wanted to do this in a major scale, um, we couldn't have that little helpful two note sweep because now we have a different pick direction. So we have downstroke and then the next note would be a downstroke on the lower string. So that's like, uh -uh. doesn't compute, right? So what can we do? Well, we can take a little bit of an easy way out, which is what I'm going to show you first, and we can do this. So we can just uh, take the bull by the horns and make a new pattern out of it. Not sequenced so much, but we are going from the D string straight to the G string and start a pattern there. So you could also see it as if we are dividing uh, the fretboard into two halves and we have the higher strings here and the lower strings here and we play the group of seven on each one of those two sets of strings. Right? So now, that last note in the first group is a downstroke and the first note of the second group is a downstroke. So now we can do a little sweep to connect the two. And from there it's the very same picking pattern just on the G, B and high E string. So that's cool. That's yet another possibility of, um, you know, that we have in our toolkit of playing things, going through the major scale. Um, but if we really, 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 really wanted to sequence this in the same way that we did before, there's a possibility to do that as well. And this is something that I came up with, uh, you know, years ago, just uh, out of as an accident <laughs> and I thought okay this is very interesting and there's a lot of potential for new licks and concepts and I've used it in so many different situations and probably nobody noticed because it's a very subtle little thing very subtle little technique 
which is uh, undetectable if at, you know past a certain speed. So what I'm talking about is this. Same thing as before, but we are only playing to the sixth note. So the sixth note is an upstroke, and then the seventh note I'm playing as a as a hammer on with my pinky, and so. Over the time that I need to play that hammer-on, my right hand has more than enough time to make that little transition to the A string and be in the right place to start the pattern from the A string with a downstroke. So we are doing the same thing from the, from the A string on, from the F. Play to the sixth note, upstroke, hammer-on, Continue with a downstroke on the D string. I mean, I'm showing you this, you know, as if it's nothing. So, oh, here's another little trick. So maybe it's cool, maybe, maybe not. You know, use it as, you know, as um, as you see fit. But really, guys, this is a very powerful technique. This is something that has. Um, and been a solution to many many problems in guitar playing for me over the years this insertion of this little one um, legato note that just makes all the difference and this is what enabled me to play uh, some of my best stuff pa patterns in seven and nine and eleven all these these crazy things um, you know that make up my my guitar style a lot of those are based around the fact that I will be leaving out one pick stroke in order to be able to continue playing or in order to sequence these ideas uh, from one string to the next. So that's a very, very powerful idea. Let me show it to you one more time. And you can do the same thing descending. Then stop here at this downstroke, pull off instead of hammer on, and then continue with an upstroke. Right? So, as you can see, it, when you play it up to, up to tempo and it gets really fluid, it becomes at a certain point impossible to tell whether there's seven pick strokes or six or you know it just becomes this fluid graceful thing and that's what you what you want to go for so now um let's move this whole thing up uh, to the second position of c major and do our descending version there and there's another little, little idea that i want to share with you guys so um, as you probably know, the pentatonic scale can be found within the major scale. Or you could say the pentatonic scale is the major scale if you just uh, cut out a couple of notes. So they're very closely related. And that means that sometimes you can kind of think in major scale and pentatonic at the same time or just switch from one to the next. So this is kind of what I'm doing here when I'm de descending this idea. And remember at the beginning of this lesson when I said that in the f in the pentatonic, if we wanted to make it to seven, we would have to insert chromatic passing tones. Well, this is kind of what I'm doing here. So I'm starting out to play the major scale, G, F, E, C. And then once I go to, down to a D string, I begin to think in terms of minor pentatonic. You know, because to me that's that's minor pentatonic, and I'm filling this out like I've done so often with a chromatic passing tone, and that gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes. And so, think continuing to think in my pentatonic mode, which is straight up E minor pentatonic again with chromatic passing tone here. And a tonic note, and then here I'm inserting the major second. 
and that again gives me seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> yeah, so that's basically the idea. Uh, I hope this was beneficial to you. And um, if it was, let me know. If it wasn't, still let me know. If you have questions, let me know. If all your needs are being met here, still let me know. <laughs> and um, follow me on social media. Link is in the description below. This is also where you will find the tabs for this lesson. Ring the notification bell if you want to see more videos like this. Otherwise, you know they will be lost in the sheer volume of new YouTube uploads each day. Um, and yeah, if you, I know I've said this basically in every video, but I'm still going to say it. And I have an instructional video out. It's called Augmented Reality Beyond the Strings. And all these concepts that I'm covering here are covered there as well, but in more depth and geared towards a more professional um, audience. So geared towards people who are already professional guitar players and trying to uh, kick their guitar creativity into high gear, so to speak. So um, the, the examples and the licks in there, and of course the analysis of the of the two full songs that I have in there, they are you know can they can get very complex. But if you're one of those people who think that this what I'm covering here is nice but not enough, and you want more, you want you know more more difficult and more extreme well then uh, go uh, go down to www.beyondthestrings.de and check out the instructional video so i think this is something that you might enjoy very much so um speaking of enjoying things very much i hope you enjoyed this lesson thank you very much and i'm gonna see you tomorrow for day six all right